What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a small title made by a small team called Dungeons of Sundaria. As I understand it, I kind of like with most games, I like to kind of peruse through the dis like through the discussions around the game on the day that it releases. Just kind of like see what people are saying and kind of mill around a little bit. Uh, but anyways, I think these developers were responsible for something like prior to this game, but I can't seem to suss out what it was. Anyways, Dungeons of Sundari. It landed in my inbox this morning, so the developers did send over a copy. I've played for about an hour, and I have some thoughts about the game. I've only played through, like, the first dungeon. I played for, like, an hour, and I'm always a little bit conflicted about how much I should play a game, because over a certain threshold, it becomes like a formalized review, under a certain threshold, and you're underprepared to make good observations, so like, where is the sweet spot for first impressions? I played for about an hour, I played through the first dungeon, and I do have some thoughts, I'll give those to you kind of at the end of the video, like little things that I've noticed, but for right now, what is Dungeons of Sundaria? Dungeons of Sundaria is a third-person dungeon crawler that seems to be kind of like amalgamated a little bit, with something like, what it really actually reminded me of more than anything else was Hellgate London is actually what it really reminded me of. It was kind of like a fantasy Hellgate London, uh, for better or worse. And so that's kind of like the comparison that jumped out at me. This is a game where you're going to be crawling through dungeons and there's going to be loads of loot and all that kind of stuff. The game is a little bit rough right now, but I do think that with some polish, it could definitely be put into a good place because some of the fundamentals around a number of the various mechanics do feel pretty solid. And while it's apparent that this is a game that was made by a very small team that obviously had kind of like budget constraints, uh, there are bits and pieces in the right spots in satisfying ways. And so today we're going to take a look at Dungeons of Sundaria. We're going to play for about 35 minutes or so. I may cut this one a little bit longer just to get some better impressions done. I don't know. We'll see where we're at at like the 30 minute mark. I'll have a link for you down below in the description. Uh, currently, the game is on sale for, well, not on sale, but the game is available for purchase, which is kind of the same for on sale, but in, on sale kind of implies some kind of like discount. The game is not discounted. It's 20 bucks and it is in early access. So if you don't like what you see right now, but the overall idea seems promising, might be a good idea to throw this one on the wish list and keep an eye on it and see what happens. We're going to dive on in. Let's go ahead and create a character. I played an orc first, but I found that like, so I played an orc melee guy first because that's what I'm all about. I like the big tanky characters. I like like the paladin, templar, fighter, barbarian characters. So that's what I went for. But ultimately the orc is so much bigger than everything else in the game that I found that I was like looking downwards all the time while attacking. And like ultimately it made the, the melee combat feel a little bit ridiculous to me. And so I'm going to make somebody normal sized this time around because I feel like if I play the orc the entire time, it's just going to feel a little bit odd. I'll explain to you why I feel like the orc feels a little bit odd later on in the video uh, because there is a reason for that I think but playing a normal sized character so I first played the orc and I was like eh, okay and then like I jumped on a normal sized character and I was like oh this feels a lot better when you're playing like a normal size not gigantic nine foot tall character uh, and so anyways we're going to create a new guy there are five races available that you can make your class out of uh, you can be a human and so we'll go with a dude first you can go with a human you can go with a dwarf you can go with an elf you can go with a halfling, which actually kind of surprised me, dude. Halflings never get included in anything. I'm actually kind of a huge halfling fan. People ask me every now and again. They'll be like, who would you want to be if you were a character in, like, Lord of the Rings? And I'd be like, first of all, a hobbit. They don't do anything, bro. Hobbits are completely irrelevant to the overall world. They hang out for, like, 110 years. They live a long time. They mostly just farm. The Shire has amazing weather. All they do is party, drink beer, smoke weed, and just, like, enjoy existing. That's it. And then they gossip. That's all. Their biggest problem is gossip. That's it. I don't want to be like in the Rohirrim. Those guys die all the time. Gondorians, nah, bro. They get slaughtered. I want to be a, I want to be a hobbit and just peacefully ignore everything until the scorching happens. Uh, and then, of course, you've got an orc over here, which is my personal favorite. But as you can see, the orc stands about a head taller than all the other characters. And with the way the targeting system works in this game for melee, it feels a little weird to me. And so we're going to be playing a cleric today. I'm just going to make a default human. And we'll go ahead and customize them real fast. You can pick stuff like age. Uh, you can decide what face you want. You can also go with eye color. We'll go with, like, brown real fast. Uh, there's varying types of beards. I'll probably just go with that one right there because I like the way it looks. And then we can also get a different hairstyle. And there's a number of different choices. And I'm sure more will be added as the game develops and moves along. Uh, we'll go ahead and give them, like, we'll give them a little thicker on top thing going on. 
That sounds, I'm not going to deprive him of his hair. We can also choose what face paint we want to wear. And so you can look like a tiger. You can have like the, you know, Detroit Rock City thing going on. Uh, you can have like one slash across the face. You know, various, various woad paints and whatnot. I don't remember what I played around with, I guess. You can't change the color of the paint, though, that goes on their faces. That is something that I would like to see, because I actually don't hate a lot of these face paints, but I'd want to make them, like, blue or green so that they're actually, like, accurate and make them out of woad or whatever. Let's go ahead and create a hero. We'll just name this guy Splat, and we'll get on into town. So here we are. This is the town hub. This is where you're going to talk to people and you're going to get quests to go out and do things. Uh, there's not a ton of characterization to a lot of these characters. They they have like little blurbs and stuff that like introduce you to them. And so anyways, we could like go to the guardhouse and we could talk to Captain Laurent and he'll ask if there's anything I can help him with, so on and so forth. And you know, they'll have like little dialogues for quests and things that are happening that'll send you out into the dungeons. As of right now, the dungeons, I think there's four of them and there's three different difficulties for each dungeon that I think raise the eye level of the gear that drops. Uh, but there's different places. Inside the inn, you can buy food. Inside the blacksmith, you can customize your armor colors and like put trim on them and then craft gear and items. The game has kind of like a World of Warcrafty feeling where enemies of certain types will drop ores of certain types, and then you can make, like, their personal custom armors that are, like, super awesome and sets and things like that. Uh, we can buy skills up here in this building. We can buy potions over here. And then this little guy over a building, he's just here for a quest. So let me get up all the quests real fast, and then we'll come back over here because I don't want to waste time with a bunch of dialogue. And there's not really, like, a bunch, but the dialogue doesn't particularly stand out either. It's clearly just kind of a springboard to get you into the dungeon. So let me go pick everything up. Alright, so I walked all over town doing like the basic tutorial stuff as you can see from all the random quests that I've completed. We've knocked that out of the way and it's come to our attention as an adventurer that people in the town have been abducted by a cult that are dragging them off to a crypt. And so now it's our job to go to that crypt and figure out what happened to all these people. And of course, there's going to be wanton quantities of just absolute slaughter along the way. Uh, this is the map right here. The game is not open world. There's basically just nodes. As of right now, these are the four dungeons that are in the game. But you can tell that there are like certain spots where new dungeons are going to go on the map. Like I think something's probably going to go on top of that deserty rise right there. Something's probably going to go on this little lump of snow or in this little nook back here for like an ice dungeon. You know what I mean? It looks like maybe something. Something could be squeezed in right there from the way that they rounded out the terrain. And so anyways, I'm sure there's going to be more content added to the game. But for right now, the only place that we can go inside this cutting of the, of the game is to the Crypt of Horrors, which is the first dungeon. And so anyways, let's dive on in. Alright, so here we are inside the Crypt of Horrors. One thing that I'm really happy about is that the load speeds are really fast in this game. They're pretty fantastic. Uh, this is our character we can run around. Actually, by and large, I'm really, really happy with the way that the run and the movement and the traversal animations look in this game. There's a lot of games where running and whatnot looks like super stiff. And that is not the case for this game. Now, our character is a cleric. I always play clerics in games like this. I was expecting him to kind of be a healer. This game does have support for split-screen co-op, but from what I can tell so far, there's no matchmaking for, like, online peer-to-peer -peer adventures. I would maybe think about implementing that, since it is, after all, an action RPG. But for right now, the game plays perfectly fine by yourself, and then if you wanted to play, like, split-screen co-op with your friends, you can do that. Uh, the crypt is over here. We got a couple of abilities. I can throw a magical version of whatever my weapon is, like so, and it will deal damage to whatever it impacts. I've got, like, a death ray, and in fact, I need to move all this stuff around. Let me go ahead and go over to my abilities real fast. Uh, we've got a healing spell right here that allows us to regen ourselves. We've got Exorcism, which is a pillar of light on a 30-second cooldown that we can cast on enemies. That sounds pretty cool. We've got Holy Light, which is basically a hand grenade and does AoE. Uh, so that's also pretty rad. Uh, we'll kind of get these in the spots where they need to go. These are all the abilities we have for right now. Don't worry too much. These are like blocks and like normal melee attacks and stuff like that. Um, I found melee in this game to kind of be a little bit clunky, largely due to the fact that, like, you see how we have, like, a little reticle dot in the middle of the screen? I think how the game works is that when you're, so, like, when you're playing ranged, it doesn't matter who you have targeted. Your missile has a presence in the world, and if it hits something, it deals damage to that thing. I think how melee works, and I don't know this for certain, but I think how melee works is whatever your reticle is on, the game like low key locks you onto that enemy. Not in terms of like taking control of your cursor and forcing you to attack that guy, but instead it links all of the attacks that you're throwing out in melee to that enemy that you've got the reticle on. 
And what that means is that, like, sometimes weird things happen. Like, sometimes, like, Hit Reg is a little bit odd. Uh, especially since I was playing the orc and looking downwards all the time. Uh, first critique, the loot. So loot drops out of these chests and off of enemies, but what you may have noticed is in the bottom left corner, we've got kind of like a an MMO-style text box. Um, it just tells you what you got down there through the MMO-style text box. Instead, the loot should kind of like fly out of the chest and then suck towards your character, basically. Like, you really want to amplify that dopamine release. That's one of the huge reasons why people play Diablo and why people play Path of Exile and why people play Grim Dawn and all those sorts of games is because of the loot explosion is like a huge dopamine release for a lot of players, and I would count myself among that number. Uh, taking one of the most satisfying parts of an action RPG... Oh, there's a guy right there. There we go. We'll go ahead and take him out with a little bit of smitage. Uh, taking one of the best parts of an action RPG and then just reducing it down to like a text box blurb? Um, not, not, not the most satisfying. I, I definitely recommend that all developers lean heavily into the dopamine release. It is a powerful factor. Now we've got a little bit of loot here. I'm gonna see if I... Oh, that's on cooldown? Alright, fine. Yeah, I block you. You didn't like that, did you? Down you go. We'll go ahead and loot your stuff right there. We've got some cloaks and things. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of this loot that we've been picking up. So loot in this game can be... A lot of it drops, and you've got to just kind of go through all of it. And then, of course, there are special terminologies. This is the character sheet right here. You're going to want to go through all of these. Some of them are self-explanatory as to what they do, but some of them like resistance or some of them like glancing blow and deflection and, and things of that nature. You're going to want to familiarize yourself with them. Otherwise, you're not really going to know what you're equipping. Now, our character benefits almost entirely from spell power, and so we're going to want to stack a lot of that. Uh, so if we have a cape or anything in here, that gives us seven spell power, so I'll throw that on. We've got another shield right here that's actually, like, flatly better than the one we have equipped, so I'll go ahead and throw that on as well. Nice little graphical swap right there. Uh, we do have a trinket, but they're all melee trinkets. This one gives us higher healing, though, so I'll go ahead and take that since we do have a self-heal. And then this guy right here would give us ranged power, so that's for guys that are using, like, crossbows and bows and things of that nature. Uh, let's go ahead and we will die. Was that a lootable back here? Yeah, dude. I love destructible environments. One thing that I would recommend is that when you hit objects like these right here too, they should kind of like wobble a little bit. They should have like a little bit of movement from the impact of like the attack or the bolt just to verify that it's been hit. I thought that hits weren't registering when I was playing a melee character because it takes multiple hits to break these. But when you're a melee character, your weapon just kind of glides through it and there's no like hit marker or anything. And so anyways, they either need to add like the wachunk that you get in melee from when you hit a normal character, or they need to just add like a little hit marker, or they need to add some kind of visual confirmation uh, that the object has been, that the object is destructible and that your attack did in fact register with hitting the environmental object. The dungeons are procedural. The last couple times I ran through here, there was no stairwell right here. And so I think there are set parts of the dungeon that are the same every single time, like the boss arenas and stuff like that. But the, the in-between bits seem to be randomized. We got a reinforced bracer. Is it any good? It gives 28 melee power. It's not for us, but it's for somebody. There's seven spell power on that ring, so I'll throw that on. We might as well wear a cape. That cape doesn't help our character that much, but it does give us a little bit of defense. We'll lose spell power if we put on that belt. We've got another trinket right here that gives us eight spell power, so we'll want to bring that up a little bit. And I think we're solid for right now. I don't think we have too much to worry about. Got lesser and expired healing potions. I still haven't figured out how to swap out. I think it's X. There we go. Uh, down on my hotbar, you can see that you can hotbar up like a healing potion or like an item that gets you out of a CC or like a root or something like that. There we go. We'll just take her out real fast. Ow! Okay, yeah, you shot me in the butt with ethereal magic. Don't like that. You keep your ghosty magic away from my anus, sir. Thank you. I appreciate that. I feel like that's a... Oh, my God. Okay, yeah, let's go. Oh, I've been shield slammed. It's okay, though. He's dead. Uh, we got five silver off of his body. A little bit of financial support will never be turned down. There we go. Get you right there. Oh, there's a rogue or something. 
There we go. Let's go ahead and lightning blast him. I do think that the ranged and the caster characters feel really, really good. Uh, that's like when the game actually started to remind me of Hellgate London. And that was... Hellgate London, for all of its problems, for whatever reason, I liked it. And I think that's actually kind of the closest comparison with this game, is that it is a dungeon-crawling action RPG, which is procedurally generated, where you're going to be scooping loads of loot of various qualities onto your person and equipping them to look cooler and then conquer further on challenges. The only difference is like the setting, whereas Hellgate London was kind of like modern futuristic with demons invading the earth and you're running around in like the subway stations of London. In this game, it's like a fantasy world. Go ahead and flick that switch real fast. There are booby traps. There are like little switch puzzles and things you'll come across every now and again. Another expired healing potion right there. We've got a master's shield of distilling. What does that do? It gives us 60 spell power. Okay, okay. Armor and resistance, yeah, it gives us deflection, which gives us protection against melee crits. It makes our potions last longer, and it makes our critical damage hit harder. Okay, I'll take that. That sounds all right. Apparently, that's got a whole bunch of spell power on it, so I guess I can equip a wand for right now. It's got a little bit of like a, you know, Expecto Patronum Harry Potter vibe. I was never like a big fan of however, like a true wizard uses a stave. All right, a wand is like a backup Saturday Night Magic special you keep in your back pocket that you can break out if you want to hit somebody with, like, a magical 22 out of nowhere. But, like, you know, the staff is what carries that big four or five buck buck. You know what I mean? Uh, we are hitting harder with this. Considerably harder. And it's a little bit faster, too. Oh, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Would you like to get magic zapped? Oh, we made that guy go all Stretch Armstrong. All right. Uh, yeah, I do think that like some of the, the, the corpse physics could be tightened up a little bit. They seem to go a little bit too liquidy from time to time. Some people will find that humorous. I don't care either way, but just an observation as we're going through the game. Sir, I just fired magic at you. Did you not see it whizzing past your head? Sir, when I whiz in your general direction, I expect you to turn around and face me. One thing I have noticed is that occasionally when you kill an enemy... Sometimes their death sound, like, plays on repeat or something. I don't know. I had a corpse doing it, like, on my last dungeon run, where he was just laying on the ground dead going, rah, rah, yeah, rah, yeah, for, like, the entire little dungeon section that I was in. And I don't know. It was, like, mildly funny, but it is one of those little polished things that I think somebody will notice. All right. So we're going on into the first mini-boss room. Let's see if we can get any rad loot. Sir, how would you like to get struck by magic? There you go. Oh, he shot me with an arrow. That bullet was so much faster than I wanted it to be. Uh, we'll go ahead and take this wolf out. This guy is now on me. We're going to dodge around, and we'll see if we can get this guy with a little bit of magic. Oh, he's got a wolf, too. Okay. Let's finish off the wolf real quick. There we go. Hit him with a magic hanger. Oh, the wolf's not dead. Can you please die, sir? Thank you. I need to put a healing spell on myself so that I get a little bit of HP back while I'm dodging his bullets. Oh, another wolf. Andy, Andy rooted me. Not great. I do like that the enemies have a physical presence in the world. Like, you can't just clip through them to get away. They actually kind of block your egress. Uh, I'm going to need some more healing. I'm going to need you to go away. The game does use input queuing. I would recommend, I'm going to check the options in a minute, but if it's not an option, I would recommend getting rid of that. Uh, I've never really liked inputs uh, being queued in video games. For whatever reason, it always just makes everything feel loosey-goosey to me. There we go. Get him with the AoE. There we go. Now we just got to scoop up our spoils. Belt, enchanted great staff. Way better than the good staff. Knock him out real quick. Venomous Battle Axe of Quickness. Okay. Is there anything else laying around here that I have neglected to pick up? Not really, but apparently the wolves had pockets full of loot. And so just one thing to keep in mind. Uh, we got a Rare Essence, a Gluttonous Ring of Haste, and a Dark Moon Hammer Fragment. So yeah, all that stuff you're seeing down there in the bottom left that's like Dark Moon whatever fragment, basically you can get like Dark... Uh, dark Moon ingots, you can get Dark Moon fragments, and that allows you to make their faction-specific armor and their faction-specific weapons with the crafting system that exists inside the game. That's what the essences are for that we're picking up as well. Let's go ahead and tool through here. Uh, we've got a ring 
and it's not bad. It makes us move a little bit faster, and it makes our magic cut through people's resistance a little bit better. So I'm okay with that. Uh, this ring right here is just flatly a better version of the ring that we already have. We have a 43 spell power helmet. I'll go ahead and throw that on, even though I do think that it detracts a little bit from the laissez-faire, I'm a badass energy that our character has. Uh, this does 37 spell power. However, we're getting 50 or 60 out of our shield and 17 out of there. So I'm not going to swap it out just yet. We do have a battle axe over here, but it's entirely melee damage. So that's going to be a weapon for somebody who is not me. That's two-handed, correct? I wanted to see what the staff looks like. Oh, that's pretty badass, dude. I actually kind of like that animation right there. Okay, yeah, I like it. In general, I've been staying away from the two-handed weapons because I had a bad experience on my orc. I had a very, very bad time with two-handed weapons. Uh, because they don't cleave or anything, they only hit the thing that's directly underneath the reticle. And so I was like, meh, meh. Apparently I got a bow of paralysis. Yeah, that's cool. I like being stunned. And of course, we have leveled up. And we have unlocked. One thing I would say is that it just tells you how much HP you get for leveling up. But if you notice on our hotbar, we got a new ability. That's to resurrect another player, basically. Uh, not that useful for our character personally. But if you're playing in a group setting with split screen with your friends or whatever, probably useful in case they die. I found that as a melee character, I died a lot compared to how much I die as a ranged character. It's just that, like, the melee character's got to be in there getting smacked by everything. And, like, if your gear isn't up to date, you get chunked pretty good. And break some of these crates open for some extra potions and whatnot. All right. Let's see if there's anything. Oh, there's a wolf down. How long is the range on this thing? Pretty long, but not long enough to hit that wolf that's in the hallway back there. I like that kind of little side dodge that the wolf does before his first strike. Like that little like cut left feint. Like that little ankle breaker that he does. Looks pretty good, actually. It looked pretty smooth. Anything else in here? Really just crates to break. I feel like I have enough potions and whatnot. Like, I have a lot of potions on me right now. Plus, I have the ability to heal myself, so I'm not really that concerned about it. What's going on down here? You guys got anything interesting that I can take a look at? An amulet. Okay. Oh, wow, that wolf's higher level. He's got a lot more HP. I think both these guys do, actually. Yeah, we'll drop the bomb on him right there, and down he goes. I need to find, like, a big war hammer. Like, a big one-handed war hammer. Apparently, I can loot things through walls, too. That's going to be a little polish issue that they're going to want to look into. Uh, actively blocking players from, A, seeing things that are lootable in the next room over through a solid wall, and then, B, making it definitely so that they can't loot it. One's just a visual bug. The other one is a polish issue. Like... I mean, I guess they're both polish issues, but you get what I'm saying. Like, one of them, not that big of a deal. The other one, a little bit bigger of a deal. All right, the door behind the boss. What's inside of here? You got anything sexy smexy in here for me? Got kind of like a little labyrinthine section. I would recommend that for these little hallway connectors with the proc gen, uh, that they have like randomly generated decorations and stuff too, instead of just being a repeated graphic, like having like a thing like a tapestry hanging on one and having like a little face over here with like a dead plant in it or like a dead adventurer skeleton over here in the corner, like little things just to break up the monotony of the repeating tile set uh, would be a solid plan. There we go. I'll go ahead and heal myself real fast. Perfect. What do you have? A belt and a trinket and four silver. And it doesn't actually look like... Oh, there's a switch. There we go. I don't know what that opened. I would recommend that doors that are locked by switches have a different graphic from doors that are unlocked, basically. Make them big and marble. Make them big and metal. Whatever you want to do. Uh, because I've had a hard time running around in this labyrinthine dungeon from time to time figuring out what door was locked in the first place because I found the switch before I found the door. Oh, 
away from me. Go away. Did he just throw a shield at me like Captain America? I mean, he's a bandit, so I guess he'd be Captain Criminality, but, like, you, you get the angle that I'm working towards here. Hi. Ow! Can't believe you've done this. There we go. Knock them both out. I'm gonna need a little bit of health back. Yeah, I wouldn't. What is, what's up with this statue? The statue is suspiciously rougher modeled than all the other statues and stuff, like all the walls and whatnot. Made me think maybe it was gonna animate and try to fight me or something. Skeletal bones. Your grandma was in a coffin where you left her. Now she's on the floor. Disrespectfully, because that's what a cleric does. Doesn't look like I can break the coffins that are inside of there. And it looks like the tile set does get broken up a little bit. Like, these have coffins right here. These ones have alcoves. Okay, so maybe it breaks up by hallway, but not by individual constituent piece of hallway. Maybe that's what's happening here. And I just got two or three hallways in a row that had the same alcove thing going on. Oh, we hit a checkpoint. Nice. That means we don't have to, like, respawn from scratch if we die. Hell yeah. We all just making death noises? Just, uh, death noising it up? I wanted to kill that guy before he shield bashed me. That's what I really wanted to do. I don't know what this guy is doing over here. He's just fighting a wall. Ow, I've been struck in the back by... Oh, my God. Okay, yeah, there's a lot of spells being thrown. I'm going to serpentine wildly and just kind of hope I come out on top. Precise Bracers of Blighting. Okay. Oh, we're on the second page of loot now. Looky there. Looky there. Uh, we've got a spell power ring... Not better than anything else that we have. We have a breastplate, which gives us a bunch of melee power. What does the graphic look like? Oh, it looks pretty cool. I don't hate it. Like, the modeling and whatnot in this game for the armor or whatever has kind of like an everquest -y vibe, in my opinion. Hey, spell power gloves. Nice. I'll take that. An adept belt. Not as good as the belt that we have unless we were going for defense. A gluttonous trinket. It do, it do have eight spell power on it. I'll take my one spell power for what it's worth. Uh, those are archer's bracers. They give range power. And then right here, that's a melee belt and then a common essence. Uh, if we could sort and stack everything, I would appreciate it. Yeah, that looks marvelous. That looks way, way better. Yeah, absolutely preferential. I lose a bit of armor by slapping those on. But I gain... I g yeah, I lose a little bit of armor, but I gain magic resistance. And since magic attacks, like, are the things that be hidden, maybe we, maybe we just move in that direction. None of these are particularly for my character. You can't take this extra gear back to town, and you can't break it down into constituent parts to craft things. Did I not kill you? Maybe I started to kill him, and someone attacked me from behind with the booty hole strike. Oh, there's two of you up front. Okay, yeah, I'm getting chunked pretty good right now. Oh, and down I go. Okay, yeah, that room was a little bit gnarlier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, there happened to be a few more enemies in there than initially accounted for. So is it that room right there? I want to see if I can hit one from back here. I don't want to aggro the whole room if I can help it. Like, if we can pick up one of the little rogues or whatever. Because that room was pretty intense. That's what you sound like, bro. I am finding this somewhat satisfying, though. 
Like, it's a tiny bit kind of, like, MMO-y with all of, like, the crowd control and, like, roots and everything else that you get hit by. I think some people are not going to like that in sort of, like, a single-player game. And I can, I can understand why. It's one of those things that, like, making the player lose control of their character in a single-player game is generally one of those things that seems to irk a certain type of gamer. Not really me. I don't really care. But, like, you know, I can understand when it bothers other people. We'll grab a little bit right there. I don't even know what these switches go to, man. Uh, the game does not have a mini-map. I would recommend that they add one. Even if it's just like a little Doom-style wireframe one that fills in as you run around the dungeon. Uh, I do think that the game definitely needs a mini-map. And they've got like a top left corner that's got nothing inside of it right now. Or a bottom right corner. Uh, where they could fit in a small mini-map pretty easily. I don't know what's up with that skeleton. You're like, hey buddy, you want a tic-tac? I'm like, no dude, I don't want a tic-tac. Go away. How did you even die in that position? Huh. Ring and a trinket, and I think we got the rest of the loot out of this place. Uh, I'm going to guess that the way that I'm going is down the corridor that's full of uh, cliché swinging Indiana Jones guillotine blades. That's going to that's gonna be my guess. How bad do these hurt? Like, part of me wants to test it with my face. I'd hit for like 50 something. The Dark Moon Plague Master? Oh, I can't see good. I can't see good. I lost the functional use of my eyeballs. Yeah, I would say that probably counts as a plague. 11 silver? Okay. He had like a little bracket around his name, though. And I was kind of wondering what that blue bracket meant. Does it mean that he's like elite or something? Or he's like a, a rare spawn or something? I don't know. And we found an orb. Now we can ponder more effectively. And we found another cloak. Is this a magic cloak by any chance? Because I still need a magic cloak. And as of yet, no magic cloak hath been supplied. There we go. We got a warhammer. It's got 18 spell power instead. This guy right here has 28 spell power on those gloves. So we'll throw... Oh, those are all ornate and stuff, dude. Uh, there are some clipping problems with the armor layering on areas like bracers. Uh, and occasionally belts that you'll run into, especially on the more strangely modeled characters. I don't know if that'll bother anybody, but it, it is a thing. I don't tend to pay attention to, like, weird layering issues that happen. Oh, we have a magical fire one, too. I'll take that. <gasps> it's got a magical glowy aura? Oh, it does. It has, like, a Morrowind-style effervescent womb womb aura. Nice. I call those womb wombs, bro. You gotta put the woom wombs on your weapon if you want to be a good adventurer. Just woom 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 I always imagine that it kind of makes the sound of like a refrigerator at 3 in the morning when you have an enchantment on your weapon. That's how mentally I always describe it to myself. I throw the hammers of justice at you. Another guy over there. Yeah, I can hammer. We can hammer it up, dude. We can, we can hammer it out. But yeah, I do wish that when you killed enemies, the loot kind of came out in, like, moat form. So, like, for every white item, there would be, like, a white moat that comes out. And then for every blue item, there'd be, like, a blue moat. And then they fly out. They sit on the ground for, like, a half second. And then they suck towards your character and in. And then there's, like, a satisfying kind of, like, ding, 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 ding noise, like, while you're looting. Little things like that. Crank up the dopamine. That's what keeps people playing. That's the stuff that makes the game feel nice. You just got to be careful about the sound effect you pick for, like, the ding-ding. Sometimes it can be like a bloop-bloop, you know what I mean? Like, kind of like Onimusha with, like, the little orbs that are like bloop-bloop-bloop-bloop-bloop when you pick them up. But I always like the, uh, the musical tone stuff where, like, when you pick up items, it's just, like, random musical tones that are in, like, the same, like, pentatonic scale or, or like, the, the same arpeggio. I always like that, too. I always thought that sounded kind of nice. But yeah, uh, let's go back to town and I'll introduce you to some of the services. Yeah, we'll go back to town. Uh, when you leave a dungeon, you can resume it from the last checkpoint I think that you were at. And it respawns all the enemies in the entire dungeon. Uh, or you can actually reset the dungeon every time you go in if you wanted to farm to get more XP or whatever else. So up here on this mountain, we have like the cleric guy. He's going to sell us cleric books. Once we get to certain levels, we can buy differentiating ranks of spells, as you can see. And each of these trainers is for the classes. Wizard, Rogue, Champion, Archer, so on. Uh, inside this building right here, we have the Blacksmith. Uh, so basically, he's going to allow us to buy uh, various things, effectively, if we have the tokens to buy those things. So, like, I've been killing Dark Moon guys, and he wants Dark Moon Chain Fragments. 
in order to unlock this crafting recipe. I think I might have picked up some plates, like some Dark Moon plate. Oh, I picked up a Dark Moon hammer fragment, so I could technically make a shield out of it. And then over here, he's also got the crafting menu, but we have nothing inside of it. We can salvage useless gear that we don't want. And as you can see, we're getting essences down there in the bottom left that ultimately we would use on those blueprints that we would purchase with the currency that we're finding down in dungeons. And so, yeah, that's what he does, this little guy over here. Uh, he allows you to customize your armor. You can change your armor colors around for various amounts of money. So if I wanted to, I could take my helmet and I could do it gold and with white trim like so to really ramp up the paladin look. And then we could buy that, but it's very, very expensive, so be careful about your money. Uh, it gets pricey very rapidly. I get the feeling that armor customization is for later on in the game when the cash flow is a little bit better. Uh, inside this building, you can buy food, like I talked about previously. Skill books, all that kind of stuff. Magic potions inside of here. Occasionally, when you talk to these guys, they'll have quests and stuff. For right now, they don't. I feel like I hit most of my thoughts as we were playing the game. I actually did that a lot more than I expected, but the developers asked how they could make the game better from my perspective, and I would say that the melee doesn't feel too good when I was playing my orc. I had a lot more fun playing a ranged character because it felt tighter. Uh, the game needs a mini-map because the dungeons are really long and it can be super easy to get mixed up mid-run directionally. Uh, the game needs individualized loot and multiplayer. Right now, I think everybody just shares everything. Uh, hit feedback on random environmental objects around the map could be better to signal that you're actually damaging them like barrels and bags and stuff like that uh, I would like the ability to actually see damage numbers when I'm hitting enemies so I can tell what the actual DPS increase was from like my my various equipment that I've been picking up throughout the run before I get into this that some of this stuff might be customizable and so anyways it uh, looks like I don't see anything in here for damage numbers above enemies heads but I would like to have that I'd also like the ability to put health bars above the enemy's heads rather than at the bottom next to our health bar while we're fighting. Makes things easier to like identify what the weak link is in the chain. At the moment, it looks like there's different sensitivity options and the ability to invert the y-axis. You can change the FOV around, which is important for people to get motion sick. Uh, you can turn on and off the aim dot if you want. There is aim assist, which apparently was on, but I didn't feel it pulling me towards enemies or anything. Felt pretty natural, and so maybe that's only with a controller plugged in. Sound splitter, fairly standard stuff. Graphics-wise, the game actually has a fair number of things that you can fiddle with. Not like a huge number of things, but definitely some things. Uh, and then the controls are fully re bindable, which is a great thing to have. And so as I was saying, I didn't enjoy the melee combat very much. I think the melee combat definitely needs to be looked at. It needs to be made a little bit weightier. Uh, it needs to be made a little bit more consequential. The range combat felt pretty good to me. I didn't get a chance to try out a bow character, but the mage and the casting like felt nice, and I enjoyed it. Uh, the AI in this game is nothing really to write home about. They kind of remind me of MMO mobs. Uh, they basically, like, whatever a kobold in World of Warcraft would do in, El in Elwyn Valley, that's pretty much what the mobs do, except that they trigger abilities and whatnot to, like, root you every now and again so that they can catch you. Uh, I, I don't think for a game like this that having, like, peerless, ridiculous, high-fidelity AI is going to be important. But, you know, it, it was something I noticed along the way. Uh, I do think they need a few more set pieces to break apart the monotony inside the dungeon. I don't know exactly to what extent it is proceduralized. But it, it's kind of the same, but it's kind of different on the playthroughs that I did. Like, there'll be a stairwell in a different spot. Or there'll be, like, a hallway that goes left instead of right. And I couldn't verify it. Like, even now, I'm not sure. But, but those are just the things that I saw. I think this game is promising. I, I think it just needs a lot of polish and a lot of love. Uh, but I do think that the core loop is fun when I was playing my cleric, and I did enjoy it, and I do want to play more and stack some loot. Uh, they could make the looting a little bit more satisfying, as I mentioned earlier in the video, but yeah, that's, that's about it. This is Dungeons of Sundaria. This is one of those games that needs some polish and it needs some elbow grease, but I do think that its heart is in the right place, and I do think that the core idea of the game is fun and enjoyable. It's just all about making those adjustments right now, with act which actually are not that bad, all things considered. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, Dungeons of Sundaria. Tomorrow there will very likely be something else. Thank you for the luxury of your time and spending it with me, and I'll be back tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Bye, everybody.